you know, there are skeptics out there who are going to say, well, sure, you were in the hospital, you were drugged, you know, in right. a coma or whatever the case is, and probably high. They, they hear you talking about hearing voices and seeing these beings. Um, what would you say to those people who have that mindset to not be believing of those things? I would say we are all free to choose what we want to believe. And I've been surrounded by plenty of skeptics in my life, and it doesn't change anything I know. Um, I have nothing to hide. I, I, they did put me on drugs when I went into the hospital very sick with what I later found out was Epstein-Barr virus and Epstein-Barr virus and Lyme disease. They put me on drugs because it affected the brain. Basically the dark side attacked me from, uh, with viral pathogens and, uh, and, and did affect the brain. And I, and they did put me on meds because if you go into the hospital and you tell somebody that you can see demons and angels, the first thing they're going to do is put you on medications because you're psychotic. Right. And I'm not saying that that didn't occur because that's what happens. And anybody who has any kind of mental illness or any of that anyway, that's all dark energy coming at them, whether it's something that's passed down on the genetic line or otherwise. It doesn't mean they're not actually, if, if somebody's bipolar, schizophrenic, or has any of that going on, they actually really are hearing voices and they really are seeing things. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 uh, their veil or their third eye and their crown chakra have been compromised. And that's for both and light so, and dark entities on the yes. other side, if I understand right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So, right? so you get these people that'll say, you know, so-and-so told me to do this or whatever, or my grandpa this, or Christ said this, or the devil told me this, or whatever. It's legit. It's just that in this dimension, on this planet, scientists, psychiatrists, psychologists, doctors, they 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 don't understand what happens to somebody in their energy system. There are so many layers that make up who we are. We have a physical layer, a cosmic layer, and a, an auric layer, a spiritual layer, a ethereal. We've got minimum of five to seven layers per person, depending on how old that spirit is or how, how many, um, I guess you could say how many lives you've lived. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the human eye is made to see when when we entered into the fall and you hear about the story of adam and eve we entered into the fall we went from a higher um dna into a lower dna we're functioning at a three stand three strand dna and elevated or exalted beings those that are light beings or benevolent beings who have ascended are operating at more of a like a 12 strand dna if not more than that very complex systems so our eyes in a fallen state in a darkened state only see a small portion of what's really going on around us i see let's go back to when you were a girl another experience i recall is uh you one of your next big moves as a family was to the island of hawaii and uh and yeah. i know that you have an affinity for the people and the culture over there um, can you tell us uh, one of the experiences? I remember one with the totem poles and what happened to you there as a little girl. Well, that was terrifying. In fact, I was scared of that and the memory of that for years, well into my adulthood, trying to understand, not knowing how to clear out some of the trauma that happened. Um, again, this is leading up to and having lots of experiences before, you know, between birth and being age nine. But I had a field trip. We lived. In, in Wahiwa, Hawaii at Schofield Barracks. And so that's for those that don't know, that's on the island of Oahu, which is also where Honolulu is. We lived about 45 minutes from Honolulu. And I had a fourth grade field trip for five days to the big island. It was my first time that I'd ever been there. We stayed at the KOA um, for five days that was not too far from Kilauea Volcano. Kilauea had been an inactive volcano I don't know, close to 100 years. I don't remember the exact timing. We walked the crater on a hike, and they talk, talked to us about Pele and Pele's hair and how they have all of the different traditions in the Hawaiian Islands about how you shouldn't take lava and, and respecting the earth and some of those traditions. 
and we we wrote in our little notebooks and everything and while we are walking the crater i have a vision and i see kilauea volcano erupting and it was a future tense future tense i could at that point at the age of nine i understood that some of what i was able to see had already happened on the earth like when i would see stuff related to joan of arc and in uh, or other per- point, points in history you know christ and mary magdalene and some other things and so i could i could tell that some of the things that i saw were past history and some of the things were I could always I could always tell what was present. That was never a concern. I never uh-huh. got it confused. I always lived in the present. But I could tell if I had a vision, if it was a past vision or future vision. Uh-huh. And sometimes I would know the timing of it, but most most of the time I didn't. And even today, I am given dates on things, but very often I just know it's coming. And I might know it's coming in that year, maybe in a month, maybe in a week based on some other things that I can kind of extrapolate. So in this situation, I knew it was a future vision. And I saw I saw the volcano um, erupting. And it wasn't just one spot where it was erupting. It was a, a line of, of um, red fire that I could see going. Uh-huh. And the next night, we were getting, we were at the cafeteria, and we were having dinner. And we got word that Kilauea volcano was erupting. And that was the first time, like I said, it erupted in, I don't know, somewhere around 100 years. The day before that, when we walked to the crater, there was a lookout point, And the scientists had been studying it. And my teachers were being told that they didn't know if they were going to let our classes in because of the danger of what was going on. And they decided that they would go ahead and let us come see. And then they closed the lookout point down right after we left at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No kidding. That's incredible. That lookout point no longer exists, nor does the KOA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now is I haven't been to Hawaii, but um, is this the area where there were totem poles, or was that another island? Or oh, that's what you mentioned. And I got on the volcano thing. That's okay. Both stories are great. Thing, yeah, the totem pole thing happened after. That was like earlier in the week, and then later Wednesday or Thursday. I think it was a Wednesday. Um, I don't know if I remember correctly. I've never actually looked it up. I think we walked the crater on Monday or Tuesday. Maybe the volcano erupted like the next night. And then we walked to, um, it was actually an ancient Hawaiian burial site that had been a satanic ritual site. Uh-huh. And um, for those that aren't familiar with Hawaiian culture, there were there were groups of Hawaiians that practiced satanic ritual where people were quite honestly disembodied and tortured and, and uh, given, quote, to the gods as, you know, young virgins or women or children or whatever. And Julia, do you and know so this we because do you know this because of your visionary insights or because of your research or how do you understand that? Well, okay, so I knew that it, they when we went and when when I was 9 and we went to the burial site, they showed us the totem poles and I was having visions while I was there and I was being shown things and I could see people who had died there and I um, they told us it was a burial spot but I could still see where they were. And I had visuals of um, people being sacrificed and tortured and all kinds of awful things. And here I was nine years old. And I also had, um, I I saw myself in that circumstance and I, um, I freaked out because I'm like, why, why am I seeing myself being sacrificed? Like what's going on? And all this energy was so dark and it was so awful. And as this was coming, I was in front of this very dark totem pole and I looked up and I felt this energy come from the totem pole and this curse energy. Now, even at a young age, I knew and, and um, what, whoever the guardian angel was, it was the man from the other side of the veil said, it's okay. And, and then I felt this energy come at me and I was told it was curse energy. And here I was nine. I didn't, I didn't know what a curse was. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. But they told me this curse energy. And I started to freak out. I felt, my, I felt this anxiety come up. I started having trouble breathing. I could feel, um, felt like hands that were squeezing my lungs. And they were like, uh, it, it had a physical effect. I could feel someone squeezing me. And I cried out. I started crying and I, and all of a sudden everything started spinning. I got super dizzy. I started feeling nauseous and I 
um, started collapsing on the ground and I, I fell on the ground. By this point, um, my mom, who was on the field trip, had gone to a different part of the burial site and the couple of kids that were around me had disappeared. They'd gone running off somewhere. So I was basically by myself within about a 50 feet zone. Nobody was paying attention to me and I, I collapsed on the ground. And I, as I came to, there was a, a man and um, I, he assisted me and he helped me get up and he walked me over to a, a bench and a place where I could sit down and catch my breath. And then he comforted me and he stayed with me for a little time. And then my mom came over and she's like, hi, honey, what are you doing? Are you okay? And I, uh, I was crying and I was upset and I just told her, like, I don't like those I don't like those totem poles. They're they're yucky. I don't and, like them. And you didn't say anything about your your visitor or your helper or what you had no. seen on the totem poles. No. No. Again, no. My mom had no idea. And is that why didn't you again? Why didn't you mention this to an adult? You're crying. You know why not tell the truth of what you see, had well, seen? That man. That man was a spirit, and mm-hmm. I could tell he was a spirit. He wasn't mortal. He was a spirit, and he was in his twenties. And he was familiar to me, and I knew him. I knew that I had known him in heaven somehow, that he was a family member or something. I had never seen him in mortality, but I, I, at that point, I, I mean, this isn't a knock against my parents, but I, I wasn't raised in a home where it was emotionally safe to discuss this stuff. Mm-hmm. I was raised in, in a religious home with some pretty strict ideas and parameters, and I never felt safe emotionally to tell anybody I would try to talk to my older sister sometimes but not not a whole lot and my younger brother um and and my parents knew I was a really spiritual kid like they knew that I had strong faith in Christ um I I love to pray right I I was a good little girl but I I always felt this insecurity and and just held it all in and I at that point I held all my emotions in I I rarely um I was raised in a house where it's, it's better that you don't express your emotions, right? Yeah. You don't want to be too angry or too, too emotional because then that's like the devil. And if you're too excited and happy, then you're being wild and you need to calm down. And so I just learned to just kind of like try to be neutral, mm-hmm. you know, and not give myself away. And it, it really stemmed from fear energy. I think a lot of it was fear energy I came to the planet with you know, being threatened even before I got here by, by darkness, you know, that they were going to get me kind of thing. Right. So that's right. where some people say, well, she's paranoid, but it's real. It's, it's real stuff that people deal with when they have these gifts. Yeah. Interesting. One of the next big shifts I remember in your story when I was interviewing you years ago was, uh, you went to Germany and maybe we're skipping some things, but it's just one of the more notable things to me. Um, you lived in Germany yeah. for a number of year, a number of years, and you did some sightseeing. Do you, are there any?